This time on Pedal Box, we've got some unfinished business with the bonnet to take care of, cleaning it up and making sure all the superstructure isn't going to slice us to bits. And we've got a load of dents to take out. I think I got my money's worth out of this disco. So for the last couple of days, I've spent about six hours reforming the shape of the bonnet. And it is a lot better than it was, I assure you. Um, previously, one corner actually dipped down and the other side was up. So now it's one continuous curve all the way across the front of the bonnet. And that's taken a little bit of work to get right because the ribs that run down the center is where most of the deflection needed to be done. Obviously, the most inaccessible point. The problem with that is where I've been using the tool from the inside to pry it up and to push it, um, it has left a few little small dents in the top. Now they just sort of push out rather than being a dent inwards, they push out so they still need taking down but that is almost impossible to see until I put the paint on it just because of the way the uh, metal is. So having put the paint on it I can now see where I need to give more attention to. As we go further back, again, this used to scoop down, come to this rail across here, and it would go up and down again, which looked ridiculous. So now it comes up and then scoops down, and it forms an S curve as it drops in and then scoops up towards the top. We've also matched the top two sections here, just being lifted so that it actually rolls into the rest of the bodywork as it gets to the top of the bonnet. There is still a couple of little bits to do. One is this crease right over here, and that just needs to be flattened out to match this side, but I don't think that's going to be too bad. Now on the underside of the bonnet, I've trimmed down all of these edges where the framework was because this was cut down a uh, box section to make L-channel so that we could get something that was both strong and light and not far too overkill to be on the bonnet and lighter to lift off. So that's all been trimmed down to where it needs to be and we filled the inside edge of the welds. We've cleaned up as much of the welds around the inside of this as we possibly can without going too thin because we really don't want to break through the rest of this metal. And there are a couple of pinholes left but I've decided that we're just going to seal them up. So I've put some sealant around the inside, most of the edges because there are a couple more bits that we need to do to weld on so it's not all finished yet but the majority of it has been sealed and then painted over again so we can see where any ripples and dents are in the bonnet and we can clean those up but for now the bonnet is looking reasonably good but it's not the only thing that we need to finish on it after we cut the gas rams off the hinges we welded them back on again and we haven't taken the hinges off the car yet so they all need cleaning up as well so we're going to clean those and spray them because at the moment they're pretty snotty welds going up the outside of both well the inside and outside of the piece that we cut off that holds the gas ram on and the um, structure that we've bolted it to on the headlight mounts the, the little brackets they all need fully welding in cleaning up and then painting so there is a bit of stuff to do this time now to do all of this, I've basically used a couple of different wedges. I have another one inside, which is a kind of comma shape that I could actually fit underneath this framework and gave me a nice flat, well, flat in one direction, but curved in another direction um, surface that I could hammer off on the other side to get it nice and flat. And I'm gonna be using that again, just to try and smooth out some of the dents that are around this area underneath these two ribs. So we'll, I'll show you a little bit more on that later on, but basically that's the hammer that I used. It is a half, uh, uh, well, half of it is a round round over and half of it is a square round over nose. There is also a flat nose one and a, a, a pick one as well, but I didn't use that for this. And a couple of dollies. Now this is just a perfectly flat dolly, or it was once upon a time, and a slight curve. And again, that's very good when you have a, a compound area because that gives you a nice edge. And this one is, once again, just a half, well, two different radius around, and you can grip it nicely. But it also has quite a nice sharp edge for when you need to get up against things. Now, before I get onto the bonnet, I'm gonna address something we didn't finish last time because we didn't have the parts, and that is our new drop links. Now, we had these to work out the alignment, but the only thing that needs replacing is this uh, bushing on the bottom. I mean, really, it's, it's not a bushing. It's two M10 nuts just welded together on the end of the rod. But we need to have that able to pivot so that it can follow the arb when the arb rotates up and down. So we now have the uh, M10 hind joints that we can put on the end of these and fit those on. And I'm also going to look at washer jets and how we can mount a pair of these on the front of the screen here. 
Now the big problem with that is we don't particularly want to drill any holes in the um, valance at the bottom of the windscreen, the drainage channel that takes all the water away, because that would just be another big gap for things to fall through and we want to drop out the side of the car, not right over all of the fuel pump and the wiring underneath. So we're going to have to extend something out this way. But that's tricky because we need this gap kept as big as humanly possible so that we can get the fuel tank out if we need to because we might have only just saved ourselves being able to get the fuel tank out and that was basically by chance. So we need something, I just need some sort of bracket that will bolt on here and that's what I'm going to do first. Now the washer jets we're using are the ones from the TT and these used to mount underneath the bonnet so they were underslung effectively across the back and then had three jets on each side that went all the way across the windscreen. Now we don't particularly want to put them on the underside of the bonnet just because it means having to run a lot more pipe all the way around put to the hinge and then back down to our tank here when we could instead run about two or three feet's worth around over the firewall and it will do perfectly well so we're going to mount these this way up uh, as if they were mounted on top of the bonnet rather than underneath but we're going to mount them on a plate at the very front of the um, scuttle tray effectively now I made a test one out of some 0.9mm uh, steel and this just clips it in like, yeah, he says, not managing to get it to clip in properly, like that. And he's put it in the wrong way around because now it's going to be almost impossible to get off this plate, but never mind. So this will sit on the front of the car, albeit it should actually be that way around. Um, and I thought about having two independently positioned ones on each side and that seemed like a lot of work to try and make four brackets instead of two brackets to hold this in place and two different bits to weld. So I changed that plan and I have this template. I'm joking, this is the actual piece that I'm going to use because we never seem to do templates ever. Um, just clip this in here and please hold whilst I try and extract this one from this piece. A few moments later so that's both of them fitted into the little panel. Now, in order to stop this flapping around, because we're not going to be able to mount this at the back edge off anything, I'm going to add on this small angle bracket. And this is actually the piece that we cut off the front splitter in the last episode. And this fits onto the plate like that, although it needs a little piece cutting out to fit perfectly. I might just mount it underneath and then that solves that problem automatically. So that will go on there and stop the plate from twisting around. But to mount this onto the car and find bracket points has been a little bit tricky, just because there's not many places to actually attach it to. So this is our plate with the washer jets on and this needs to go right in the middle of the car here so that they spread equally across the windscreen really nicely like that. Now, as you can see, that would be right in the way of both getting the fuel tank out. If it was here, you just wouldn't be able to move it across because of the frame rail, it couldn't come forward. So that would absolutely secure that fuel tank in there for life, which we don't want to do. And it would also get in the way of the windscreen wiper motor mounts just a little bit. Now we had to move this windscreen wiper motor all the way over to this side and that has left the original mount still welded onto the frame over here, or at least part of it. So we're going to be able to use that to pick up to mount onto this side and the other side will mount onto the bracket that actually holds the windscreen wiper motor in. So this is somewhat convenient still being here. We can just loosen this bolt, slide another um, mount in and it will all be good. And then our windscreen washers should sit just about there and be completely obscured when the bonnet is down so it should make them look or rather not look like they're there at all. And about an hour later, we have a finished bracket, albeit it's not painted and there's still some slightly suspect welds inside and a couple of ugly ones that we won't talk about too much. The rest of it works nicely. This one bolts underneath here where the windscreen wiper goes as planned. And on the back, I've just added this little extension which drops right down onto the old mounting point from the windscreen wipers. So we can just weld it on. And there's a tiny little L-shaped bracket 
that goes on the back. Now, I was just going to have a flat piece that came straight off like that, and I thought, well, it might be a little bit flexible, it might snap off. Don't particularly want that. Um, more if it gets knocked than anything else, not in use. So I've made it this little double L-shaped piece, which sits on the back there and just screws in. So we can weld along the bottom of that and along the top and really fasten it in nicely onto the old mount under there. So we'll get that in and move on. Okay, well now we can move on because I forgot one crucial element when I was installing this little panel and that is the bonnet, which you would think would be a kind of difficult thing to forget about. But when it came down, the panel, sort of unsurprisingly, clonked into the back of this vent. Now, I've lowered it a little bit and I think it's still gonna work okay. We've definitely got two of the three nozzles on each side have got clear view up to here. The only question is once they have a bit of air flow flying over them, whether or not they can go high enough up that they'll actually reach up to the top of the windscreen. But we won't know that until A, we plumb it and B, we drive it. And the latter of that is way in the future. So for the time being, it clears, it doesn't clatter into the back of the bonnet anymore. I'm gonna call it good. I think I'm gonna quit for the day. So last up this episode, we're going to deal with the drop links, which we made a start on and then ran out of parts to finish. Now you can see this is the old one, the legitimate Audi one that came off the car, and you can see where this bushing is being pulled all the way out the top, and the bolt no longer sits centrally at the bottom. Now, that's what we need to replicate in the version 3. If we're calling this version 1, we moved on to version 2, and then version 2 got made into version 3. You can see there's some commonality between these. Now version 3 is great, this is dimensionally accurate for where the holes need to be at rest. Unfortunately that doesn't work because with the bolt coming off the front of the suspension arm like that and the arb coming around and attaching onto here, as the arb wants to go through and rotate, it actually can't do that. It doesn't go up and down, it has an arc to it as it rotates around and that means that this point needs to twist, which obviously with this being rigidly attached to the suspension, this upright being rigidly attached to the bushing made of a couple of M10 nuts, that doesn't work. So we thought, well, we'll get some heim joints and this will be nice and easy. And then we ran out of the right type of heim joint. We had M12s, not M10s. So what we have here is a piece of M10 by 1.5 threaded rod welded onto a piece of plate with the same kind of hole, albeit on a slightly smaller plate, drilled right in the top. And then it has a jam nut on and then the heim joint just fits on the bottom. Now we could have possibly made male hind joints fit onto this one by just cutting it off, fitting a threaded section and then running it in, but we decided instead to go with the female ones and having got them, they're a little bit longer than I imagined. I probably should have looked at the specs on the website when I got them from McGill and um, well, I had basically had to start over from scratch, which is no bad thing. This is a much simpler design compared to this and frankly butchering that again really doesn't help us. So I'm going to fit these onto the car and hopefully that will be the drop link situation resolved. <sighs> well, that was a wasted couple of hours. Why am I doing this the hard way? Well, that is an extremely pertinent question and probably one that's most on the nose that I've asked myself throughout this entire build. Why am I making this hard for myself? Because there is a very easy solution that I found to fitting this when I looked at it and tried to fit it in place. And it's one you probably all screamed at the screen when you were watching it, and that is to use two hind joints, which I have now ordered. So this is just two M10 hind joints or rose joints, depending on where, which side of the Atlantic you're on, um, with two jam nuts on a length of M10 rod. And this fits perfectly in here. Just like that. 
And that's all we needed. I didn't need to make any of these. these. These little brackets, making two of them, probably took me the better part of two hours. Didn't need to do that. That was a waste of time. So I just need to make the one for the other side now, pop that on, and I'm not going to bore you with fitting it because honestly, it's two M10 nuts that fit onto two bolts that go through some bits of suspension that you've seen a thousand times already. And it's as simple as that. I could have fixed this months ago, let alone last week when I just ordered the other bits. I, I mean, the dimensional sizing was definitely important to do. I think that was worthwhile, but yeah, don't know why until I put the other one on this side of the car, as you saw in the video, that it all kind of just clicked and went, yeah, that I should definitely do this the easy way. These are about six or seven pound a piece from McGill Motorsports. And obviously I already ordered two, so I had to order another two, get them down and it's all good. But yeah, it works now, and I think this whole episode has basically been uh, a catalogue of me making silly mistakes, like not seeing the obvious answer here, and forgetting that we put a giant scoop in the bonnet, and then building something that would get in the way with the uh, washer jets. And if you'd like to help us make more mistakes on this and all of our other projects, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show, and you can see our long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, the fun is better than good one is currently in stock, we've also got hats, beanies depending on where you are in the world it might still be cold but you could always go skiing i guess and need a warm coat in which case we've also got hoodies that you can buy and if you go to patreon.com forward slash pedal box show you can support us from as little as a dollar a month that will also get you access onto our discord server on the higher tiers and discount for merch in our shop so definitely do patreon first then have a look at the shop and see what you can get if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell next to it you'll get notified when all of our new videos go up and obviously patrons hopefully assuming timing and schedules go right get access to our videos between 12 and 24 hours early so that's a little extra perk that we try to keep to and we do probably get to about 90% of the time I, I reckon thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time with more mistakes on more projects